Here, beautiful San Inez Valley, about seven years ago, full time and part time for about the last 10 years, 15 years. And I make wine, actually, I grow wine. It's really pretty interesting. Basically, the first thing you have to do is you have to find a piece of property that is uniquely suited, uh, climate wise, for what varietal you want to plant. So, if you have a varietal in mind that you you want it to be a Pinot Noir or, or Grenache or Syrah or Cab or Chardonnay or what you know whatever. Uh, certain varietals grow best in certain places based upon the climate. Then you have to find soil or hillside that faces a certain direction. Um, that when you plant certain rootstock to that varietal, you have that marriage. And the French have been doing it for hundreds of years. I mean, French make the best and the worst wine in the world. Uh, and certain things are called like Grand Cru. That's, that means it's ideally perfectly suited for the, the varietal the wine you're going to make. And it's basically like when, when all the right things come together. We have a piece of property that's south facing. It's basically completely dumb luck, uh, which helps us grow really great fruit. Like right now is uh, February. We've pruned everything back, and it's like a rose bush. You know, you, you cut everything back, which is kind of a, a weird feeling because you show you're taking all the work that you've done and basically are throwing it to the ground from the year before. But you're preparing for new growth, so you have a little spur coming off it that's going to have a bud inside of it, and then in about April, uh, the bud swells or the sap comes back up from the ground. Bud swells, and everything it's like a little it's like a little baby, you know just inside there and it's got a flower it has become pollinated and the fruit sets and then at that point we're waiting and we're it's basically looking at the steak on the barbecue and then from the harvest um, you go through crushing destemming you go to barrel um, making sure everything's kind of in line and then at that point, you're also watching again. So it's kind of like this little arc, and then right at the peak, you pick. And then the next aspect is making the wine, and you're just trying not to screw it up. family, which is our Bordeaux style blend. This is mostly Merlot, has some Cabernet Sauvignon in it, Cabernet Franc, and a little bit of Petit Verdot. Um, a varietal is pretty much a grape. So in this, we have four different types of grape that make up a Bordeaux style blend. Um, to explain this wine a little better, it's our your meatier, your juicier, your prime rib, your steak wine right here. Um, if you open up a bottle of this, let it decant over an hour to our dinner with family and friends, it'll taste like a different wine every time. Um, and on the label, we have uh, Gilbert and Bertha, which is Keith, the owner. It's his grandparents on the label with their two kids, Larry and Harvey, which is Keith's dad and uncle. Uh, so kind of representing the four varietals in the wine, also the four different personalities in the family. labels don't look like anybody else's. Uh, our tasting room doesn't look like anybody else's. What we do here is not like anybody else. And nobody knows what to steal. Because they people do try. But they don't understand the essence of it. And what this is really about. Upset me. She wasn't asking me how I found. As soon as this feels like a real business, we burn it to the ground. I mean, it's funny to say, but it's like if you have to work at any business that, you know, you need to hand a resume to or they have a handbook, that's not really a business I want to be a part of. <laughs> um, more than anything, yeah, it's, I want to keep it so everybody in our family has a job, to be honest with you. You know, April, early April is where spring starts forming, but there's still remnants of winter. 
And if you think about, like we're standing right now in a valley. A valley of air is the exact same thing as a valley of water. Water always runs to the lowest form. So if you have ever been in a golf cart or driving with your windows open through the hills, you know as you crest hills and go down, the temperature changes. We need to protect these vines or these buds that are starting to fill with liquid and life because the sap's starting to flow into them because they're getting ready to produce. And we have to shield them in this water. So we have, if you look at the top of the hill where the house is, we have a huge cistern there. We have another cistern there. We have a well here and we have to throw on all the wells pumping like crazy because we are going to drain with gravity um, and pressurize with all of that, you know, eight, eight pounds per gallon all the way down the hill. And we turn on all the sprinklers or the overhead irrigation and we, this is just covered in water. And then it'll be icicles hanging all the way down from the top to the bottom of each one of these. And it forms a cocoon around it because the water is warmer than the air. But as like just, you know, if you if you are on a cold morning and you spray your windows with uh, with liquid, it kind of frosts up or freezes up. That's what happens here. And it forms a cocoon around the bud and the bud does not freeze. The water around it freezes and you can be defrost by that. But if it gets to like 26 degrees for more than three hours, you're frost, you're freezing all the way through. All of these here and this whole area, this entire area was lost in one night. Nothing you can do about it. Finger of God comes down and just goes frozen. Okay, so what you're drinking now is our Cab Syrah blend. This is 16 Cabernet Sauvignon, 40% Syrah. Uh, this is actually grown from both of the family's home vineyards. One is out on Ballard Canyon, about two miles west of us from here. It's where the Syrah grapes are grown from the high terraces. And then the cab grapes are actually grown from where the 101 meets the 154, the El Camino Real vineyard. Uh, these are two varietals you don't see necessarily paired together that often, but they do complement each other really well. The label is the owner, Keith. It's his grandparents uh, out in Arrowhead, California, out on a bow. It's right after their honeymoon. It's called 1947 Man in White. Uh, it's the blending of two varietals. The cab's more of a feminine and the Syrah's more of a masculine. That's why there's two people on the label. Not a lot of people get a hold of what they do in their hands, you know, and it's always weird to say I have a two-year-old son and we're working on wines right now that uh, I didn't know him, you know, uh, it was three years ago. We have a port that's five years old. My daughter was two. Um, and then we were working on that the whole year before and, you know, bottom line, it was when we were working on that vintage, she was born and now she's, you know, a six-year-old kid running around like crazy and it just seems like there wasn't a world before that, you know? And that's how we start judging our lives in months and years and not days and weekends. We've, we've been thinking about where we've been in the last you know, 15 years where we've been in the last 20 years as a family or 35 years of my life. And my ultimate goal is very simply that every day early in the morning I ask myself, you know, if I'm, I basically pose the question to myself that I'm going to die tomorrow. What do I want to do today? And this is exactly what I want to do. Going up here, going up here.